I'd like to ask President Jonathan Nez from the great Navajo Nation. Tribal leaders, and uh, let me also introduce our Navajo citizens. If you can stand, those of you that are standing, wave. This is the Navajo Nation, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I know I have some up here in the rotunda, second floor, third floor, fourth floor. So thank you for being here. My name is Jonathan Nez, I don't know uh, going to the exchange on the next side of the Russian team, but the team leaders will change, I'm not going to change, I'm So yeah, I'm going to be in the education and I'm going to be in the And uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, members of the uh, 24th Navajo Nation Council, Speaker Seth Naiman, uh, they're here as well throughout the uh, past couple of days, throughout the week. We also want to acknowledge them as well. As many of you know, we have a three branch government. I and the Vice President, Myron Leiser, is here with us as well. Myron, you want to stand uh, things on this side of the tunnel, our Vice President. We will receive the Executive Branch, Speaker of the Council, the Legislative Branch, and we also have the Navajo Nation Chief Justice with us as well today. If you could wave, that's our Chief Justice, Joanne Jane. Chapter officials, school board, members of the Navajo Nation, we thank you for being here support uh, our efforts for our Navajo citizens. I want to thank uh, Indian Affairs uh, Department Cabinet Secretary Desiree Lynch Rio. Thank you. Let's give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lynn, for the opportunity to comment on the state tribal collaborative efforts and success. <clears throat> Excuse me. Congresswoman Deborah Holland, thank you. I know she has a busy schedule. Congratulations. Give her a round of applause. Give her a big cheer. It's great to see Deb. And her efforts for the missing and murdered indigenous women. You know, there are missing indigenous people in our nations, right? Also wanted to uh, give a shout out to our very own Navajo Nation Missing Persons Advocacy Group. This week, if you get a chance, she has information that she can share with you of our missing loved ones from the Navajo Nation. And we pray that we, we find them, we find them alive and bring them home to our nation. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, and so this day our governor of this great state of New Mexico. Again, let's give her a big round of applause once again. We look forward to working hand in hand with her. I mean, that's what this day is all about. The state tribal collaborative efforts. As many of you know, tribal leaders, there is a government-to-government -government relationship here. And sometimes we have to remind folks out there of that collaborative effort, that government-to-government, nation-to-nation relationship. Only tribal nations have that designation. The State Tribal Collaborative Act is vital to all Indian nations, tribes, and pueblos to promote positive government-to-government -government relations with the state of New Mexico. I know that the efforts put forth by the state agencies, and we visited many of them throughout these, this week, have proven valuable.
to the Navajo Nation. We have worked well with many of the state agencies, designated representatives on projects or issues on the Navajo Nation. Our Department of Community Development works very closely and benefits from the assistance of the Indian Affairs Department with capital and TIF projects. I also want to introduce our newly appointed Division Director for the Division of Community Development, Dr. Pearl Yellowman. I know she was here earlier. She's going to be heading our Division of Community Development. And I do have many of our cabinet members here joining us today to congratulate our new cabinet uh, for the Ms. Leiser administration. The annual summit provides an opportunity for all Indian nations, tribes, and pueblos to meet with the governor and the senators, representatives, state agencies, and many of their staff to discuss areas that need improvement to ensure continued communication and collaboration. I think many of us in the room, in the rotunda here, tribal leaders are looking forward to this legislative session. It brings a very important, very important topic to the forefront, and that's the education of our tribal citizens, our young people. So young people that are here at the Capitol and in the rotunda, I want you to know that your tribal leaders are engaged in those efforts to get better and quality education to each and every one of you. Let's give them a big round of applause, our students. Since we are talking about collaboration and celebrating, 10 years of the State Tribal Collaboration, Collaborative Act. You know, we must highlight the suit that has brought this education endeavor to the forefront for our tribal students and for our young people. And that is the Yazi Martinez suit. And we would like to see more participation from our tribal leaders with the coalition that's advocating for comprehensive change to the education system here for the state of New Mexico. And that falls in line with this government-to-government -government dialogue we should have with the state and the state agencies. With this coalition, we want all tribal leaders to be on the same page with the state of New Mexico. We want the support of the New Mexico legislative body to pass legislation and Governor Lujan Grisham to sign laws that will provide an adequate education to all at-risk students. We can find yeah. We ask all tribal leaders to join in the initiatives that will improve the level of education for the Atlas students. The Navajo Nation will be at the table for our Navajo students. The Navajo students in many of the schools throughout the state of Arizona have a large population in these school districts. Not just school districts on the Navajo Nation, but even here at the Albuquerque Public Schools. And we need to fight for the tribal leaders and guests here. You all know the incident that occurred at Cibola High School. Let's not sweep that under the carpet. Yeah. 
We need these education discussions to include training for our teachers, our staff, cultural teaching to everyone, not just in Albuquerque public schools or schools on or near the now on reservations, but clear across the entire state of New Mexico. Am I right? So that this does not happen again. And a poor family, and now low family, we have to endure that, cutting up the hair, racist comments. How many of us have endured that in our lifetime? That shouldn't happen in this day and age. And let this be a charge to the legislature and our governor to provide cultural diversity training to all our teachers, staff throughout the state of New Mexico. So that people will understand our way of life as tribal members. We are a diverse group, diverse group, and it was mentioned today that we are the first inhabitants here in this land. And being the president of the Navajo Nation, I thank you, the Pueblo Nations, for allowing us to be on your indigenous lands today. We are thankful for New Mexico and their express action to assist and invest in our native youth. Our native youth, we love you, we appreciate you, and you're special. And we as parents and grandparents, we apologize to you if we don't say that often. But I know that our way of life teaching, many of us grew up with some tough native love as we grew up. That resilience teaching should be incorporated into our school systems, am I right? And we have professionals and highly educated academics that will be a part of setting the curriculum in our state schools. And it is time for us young people, please hear me on this professional, it is time for us to begin to rewrite history from the indigenous perspective. And we look at you to do just that. To have textbooks in our schools that teach indigenous culture, tradition, history, and of course, our indigenous language. Let me give you just a quick history of the Navajo people, and many of you probably know this history. This is taught in our schools, and I'm going to give you this as an example of what we need to do, what more we need to do in our state schools, in our PIE schools, throughout our tribal communities. 150 plus years ago from the Navajo, in the name of westward expansion, the visitors coming from the east coast to the west coast, taking lands, taking our lands. That's the history that we need to retell in our classrooms. The part that we don't tell is those lands belong to the indigenous people of the southwest and throughout the country of ours. And as people came through, many of us know the history of the scorched earth campaign, burning of our crops, burning of our homes, to get tribal nations, tribal people to their weakest. And that's the only time they could take us on, is at our weakest. But we persevered as tribal nations. Many of you know the history of the Long Walk as we came from the Navajo Nation. Our four sacred mounts marched through this area to Fort Sumner. People who couldn't keep up were dealt with quickly and were killed. Pregnant women, our elders, 
were taken and were killed on the way to Fort Sumner. And we were in captivity there for years. And the signing of a treaty, which we commemorated last year in 2018, the Treaty of 1868, where our Native, our Navajo women, our women are strong, our indigenous women are strong and resilient. We're a part of that treaty negotiation to say that we are going no other place but back to our homeland. And the treaty was signed. The treaty was signed. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Right now in our school districts, in our public schools, the history about the long walk and about that era ends right there with the signing of the treaty. But many of us know that there's more to that history than just signing of a treaty. We're missing a big part of our history as Navajo people. The resilience, the overcoming mentality of who we are, it didn't end there. We helped each other 400 plus miles through some harsh terrain, making our way back to our homeland. That should be taught in our schools. That is a story of resilience and overcoming of a people that should be magnified to the next generation after us, our young people, to say, I can do it. I can overcome tough times. I don't need to give up because our ancestors never gave up 150 years ago. That's the story that we should be telling. We got home, and guess what? It didn't end there too, right? We came home back to our burned homes, our burned farms, and the people had to rebuild. That's another example of a story of a great people. And those are many stories throughout all tribal nations, throughout the state of New Mexico, and throughout the Southwest. And we got to challenge the state, New Mexico Public Education Department, to have our professionals there so that they can help and rewrite some of the curriculum so that tribal young people can hear the story. We have stories of folks that are going to school here that don't know their culture, their cultural identity for themselves. And sometimes our young people give up, right? We know those stories. Depression, suicide in our communities. The answer is within our history and is who we are as indigenous people. To tell that story so that our young people can say, yep, I come from a strong lineage of great leaders, of great people, and they won't give up. And so I encourage you tribal leaders, I encourage everyone here to sit down at the dinner table with your children. Bring them back to the dinner table. Turn off our cell phones, right? Turn off our televisions. Except the Super Bowl, right? Just kidding. But to have a discussion around the table, partaking in a meal, and saying, I love you, I appreciate you. How was your day? Let me tell you our history, because many of us have our own family history of resilience, of overcoming tough times. That needs to be reinstilled into our younger generation. So I leave you with that challenge, everyone that is listening to me, and I appreciate the time given I thank each and every one of you tribal leaders for your advocacy here. Let's give our tribal leaders a big, big round of applause. And I am hopeful, Vice President Leiser, we're hopeful with the governor, with the new governor. We had a great talk this morning, watching 
The sun rises over the mountains. Did you guys see that, tribal leaders? It was beautiful. And to be part of the people's house here, and even the governor's house this morning, that we are one nation. All of us, tribal communities, our white brothers and sisters, our Hispanic brothers and sisters, and all ethnicities, to come together today as one to advocate on behalf of a greater state of New Mexico. Because if we are successful, tribal nations are successful, guess what? The great state of New Mexico will be successful. God bless you. God bless the great state of New Mexico. God bless our tribal nations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, President Hess, for those powerful words.